Hey everyone, I wanted to put together this short little video to walk through how to set up an Ajax callback for one of the default Apex components, the side-by-side -side master detail report. What this will allow is for our users to be able to select a new record, in this case it's going to be customer, and refresh the header and the detail report without forcing a full page refresh, effectively speeding up the page um, just a little bit in this case. Um, this is going to be applicable to this kind of report, however you can use the very same technique to almost every component in Apex by utilizing these Ajax callbacks, which are found under your processing tab inside of your Apex page designer. As with many things in Apex, there's a handful of ways to achieve the same thing. I'm gonna walk through two examples today in this video, um, but of course, I'm sure there's other ways to achieve this. So switching over to Apex, I want to show you a quick example of what this is going to look like at the end. Um, so you can see what I'm kind of talking to when I'm talking about the Ajax callbacks. So this is a regular master detail report. I built this with the page wizard. I'm using the HR customers and orders tables or the, uh, the Oracle OEHR customers and orders tables here. Um, so as I click on a customer ID, you could see it's refreshing the page, it's redirecting me, and it's of course refreshing the details here at the bottom as well. So if I'm looking at the details and I click on a new customer, it's always gonna take me to the top of the page. I'm gonna scroll back down to see the details. This is being achieved by effectively redirecting me to the same page, in this case, it's page seven, and I'm redirecting to the same page and there's a hidden page item for customer ID that this is setting and then reloading the page and pulling the new version of the report. Now compare these load times and what this looks like to the example with Ajax. Um, again, the exact same page, exact same query, for the most part, the same setup. Um, I have changed the color blue just so we can differentiate the, between the two. But now if I click on one of these, you can see the middle report is refreshing. And likewise, if I scroll down to details and click on new customer, it does not reload the whole page, meaning that it doesn't jump you to the top of the page either. And so, the load time is much quicker. Uh, you do not get that flash of a reload when you click on something. And again, this is an example with just a basic report. But if we were to, I have some custom HTML at the bottom of each of these pages. If we were to uncomment that, um, because realistically, a lot of production level applications or realistic customer applications will have multiple elements on a page, not just a single master detail. So let's imagine there is, you know, different Apex components, different custom components, different things that might effectively slow down the load time just a bit. Uh, we can go to the two versions again. So now there's just some loaded images here at the bottom of each of these pages. And again, if I click on one of these customers, again, you can see it refreshing. Um, and the whole point of this is just to simulate a little bit of a longer load time because Apex is effectively uh, incredibly quick to reload the page uh, by default. So I had to load some images to try to slow it down so you can see the difference. Again, here is the same images on this version. And if I click on here, it's only refreshing these middle two um, and not the entire page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my first example, which is actually gonna be page seven. Um, so that's this one. And I'm just gonna make a quick copy of it. And that's the copy that we'll work off of. So let's just do a copy of the page. And once you have this page copied again, a new page is gonna be page 15, an exact page copy of page seven. Um, the first thing we wanna do is give our regions some static ID so we can identify them via our JavaScript. So for this top region, which is just our header, I can just call this one header. And for our bottom region, likewise, I will just call it details. Then what we want to do is we want to set up an Ajax callback. So in our processing tab, um, you have your typical submit, validating, processing, and after processing. But then you have this fifth one down here called an Ajax callback, right? So an Ajax callback is a asynchronous call to the database where the browser can effectively make a server request without having to reload the page. And so I'll do, I'll give it a quick name. And in this PL SQL code, the only thing we really need to do is ensure that the value that we're passing to this Ajax callback is set in the session state effectively. So here's this item called P15 customer ID. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna use this package here. So the Apex util set session state. 
So this is going to take the value of GX01 and set it equal, set the value in session state um, of P customer ID equal to GX01. But where's GX01 coming from, right? GX01 is being passed over from our server process call via our JavaScript that we need to take care of. So for that, what we can do is we'll create a quick dynamic action here. So we'll create a dynamic action. Uh, the action will be on a jQuery selector. And for the jQuery selector, we can give it a name. So click class and on click. And the, the class is going to be T media list item wrap like that. And if you're curious where I got this from, um, this is from actually the class over here. So if I inspect this page, you have a class called T media list item wrap, um, which is what's right here, T media list item wrap. And so that's what I'm targeting right now. So the jQuery selector, we can say whenever someone clicks on that class, um, we can execute some event. So let's go over here and we want to do some JavaScript code. And for JavaScript code, we just need to do a couple things, right? We need to first, we need to get the value of that customer that the, the user has clicked on, right? So we'll just define a variable just like that. And so this is going to get the value of that customer ID um, of the element that was clicked on. Now, where's this data element coming from, right? This is a data element for a customer ID. Uh, well, we haven't quite set that just yet. So let's take a pause here. Let's go over to our query for this page. And this is the link that comes out of the box with Apex that's effectively, again, redirecting you to the same page, but setting the value of customer ID. So for now, I can actually just go ahead and comment that out. Um, I'll just put null for now. We'll come back to this. And then under your link attributes, you actually want to set it, change it from null to add that data attribute. So here's a data attribute for customer ID, and it's going to be equal to whatever customer you're clicking on. And then here's the same class, um, the T media list wrap class as a link attribute. I'm just need a comma here. All right. So with that saved, now we can go back. And we're going to go back to our JavaScript code. And this time we are going to first just validate that we got a correct ID. And if, it, if there is an ID that exists, we are going to set the value of a hidden page item. So this is P15 customer ID. We're going to set the value to what we found. Um, then we are going to call a server process down here. So inside that same if block, we can call the server process. And what we want to pass over is the customer ID that we just found. So we'll pass over that customer ID and then we'll just close the bracket right there, put a comma and open a bracket after that. Now here's where we decide what we're actually going to pass um, to the server. So here we can just copy and paste this code block. And we're going to say we're going to pass over text, you know, instead of JSON. Um, if it's successful, let's go ahead and call this JavaScript API to refresh our two regions. Remember, we gave a static ID of details and header. If there's an error, let's just log the error for now. And so with that being done, uh, we can save. Now, because we are making a request to the server right here um, to call this set customer ID, we will need a comma here. And passing over the customer ID, that's this is effectively GX01, right? So there's X01 right there, and then this is GX01. Then it's being set in the session state for P15 customer ID. And by default, both of these regions has a where clause that says P15 customer ID and P15 customer ID. So when these are refreshed, it will go to the server, it will get the value that we just set via JavaScript or via PL SQL, and then it'll refresh the region. So let's check this out. So if we go ahead and run that now, we will see our new page here. And if we start to click on these, you can see it now refreshing instantly um, because we're just refreshing those two regions and we're not refreshing the whole page. Um, but what happened to our, you know, hover 
CSS class as well as our blue attribute that kind of indicates to the user that they're able to click on this element in order to see that record. Uh, well, that's because we just set the link as null. Um, so previously they had the link redirecting you to the page, but if you want, you can just get that back by just adding a dummy link here. And when you refresh the page one more time, you now get that back that same hovered. So again, when you click, you'll get the new record and that's all it takes to set this up. Now, I also talked about there being a second way to achieve something um, almost identical. And so we can take a look at that. What we can do is we can actually get rid of this Ajax callback altogether. We can take a look at our code and we can really simplify this code by instead of calling the Apex Ajax callback, we can just refresh the regions, right? So we can just say um, Apex region for details and header. Let's go ahead and refresh those both. And what this is doing is it's going to set the value of customer ID and then it's going to refresh both the regions. And within the regions, you are going to be able to submit that item. So P15 customer ID. So it will effectively take the item that's on the client side and send it to the server before it tries to evaluate the query that's above. Now, in theory, this will work. If you try to do it this exact same way, you will get an error. We should not be updating the session state because no checksum was provided, right? Apex provides a checksum for all of its items um, to prevent the browser from tampering with them, which is exactly what we're trying to do right now. Um, to get around this, you could potentially set this item that it's kind of looking for the checksum to unrestricted and run the page that way. And then you have, again, another working example with less code. However, please avoid from doing this unless you understand the downsides of setting a page item to unrestricted, right? Uh, you have to be careful with uh, the security risk. So specifically like parameter tampering, um, you know, maybe some injection attacks. It's harder to audit some of these items. Um, but basically what you're allowing is any JavaScript browser extension or some malicious user will be able to submit the value and then submit it back to and Apex will accept that new value in the session state, right? So while this does work and is a bit simpler, the recommended approach is actually still gonna be the first approach that I showed you um, right before this. I hope this helps. And again, this was specific to the master detail report, the side-by-side -side option. However, this can be applied to every component across Apex. Um, you can set up something very similar, even some of your custom components. All the code that I walked through today will be available on my GitHub page, which I will link down below if you want to just check it out and copy and paste it into your own environment.